What's up everybody and welcome to the Sim Channel for more coverage of the Sim Racing Expo 2019 at the Nürburgring. It's now been two weeks and I decided it's time to finally show you a bit of the hardware on display at the event. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to cover all exhibitors and I apologize to all those that I didn't get to talk to or put the hardware on display here on my channel. Anyway, I've tried to group those that I did visit in a way that makes sense, at least to me, and we're starting the first video in this three-part series with premium steering wheels and pedal sets. Here are the timestamps for this video in case you want to skip ahead, and I've also put them in the description below. Before we start, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Sim Racing and Sim Racing Expo content like this. So without further ado, let's get straight into the first interview with Karsten of Vitech. Okay guys, I'm here with Karsten of Vitech. Uh, Karsten produces top class steering wheels for sim racing. And uh, the one that we're seeing here already, I think Karsten can tell us a little bit about. Yeah, what you can see is a 911 steering wheel from the RSR uh, 991.1, um, which is uh, used from uh, Manta Racing, for example, here on the Nürburgring in the 24 hours of Le Mans, uh, of Nürburgring. And uh, we have, in this case, 10 buttons, 2 rotaries, or in this version, also clutch pedals. Yeah. Hold it up a little. Yeah. So, clutch pedal. Yeah, magnetic. Magnetic shifters. Very all, nice. All is hand-wired, so it's, the manufacturing process takes time. It's not like a serious production where you put out 20 wheels a day or so. So it's really craftsmanship. Yeah, all right. Uh, what other wheels uh, do you sell? So here at the booth I have the Audi R8 LMS wheel and also uh, the AMG 3 wheel. Um, I have a contract with AMG for the parts, so it's not like any rip-off or so. I'm trying to get as much parts from the original manufacturer right. as possible. So the, the, it's actually, I think it, it's something that's quite interesting. So the Porsche wheel, this is the one, if you, if you know my channel, this is the one I have at home as well. I don't have the button box. Um, and this is the is a genuine Porsche steering wheel that you can get at your Porsche dealership. The um, the Mercedes wheel that he's also offering, it's also a genuine part, but it's not just a cup car. <laughs> it's the actual GT3 AMG. Yes, correct. Right? And that's I think that that's quite a special thing. Yeah, it took me like uh, over half a year to make the contract. Um, I'm a friend of mine is a GT3 driver from Mercedes. Uh, he made the. Uh, uh, made the contact with the AMG and uh, through this I was able to show them some quality I make and then they were fine with that and I get the parts because this is not normal, you can't go in the dealership and order the GT3 parts. Porsche is the only manufacturer actually who uses it. Yeah, right. And the, the Mercedes wheel, it's, uh, you told me it's a 32 centimeter wheel as well, yeah. is that right? Yeah, it's quite huge for what it looks like, so it's also the same diameter as yeah. the normal round Like for, for the butterfly shape, you usually yeah. would expect something smaller, yeah. but it's quite a large yes. rim, yeah. All right, and then there's the, the Audi wheel. Uh, it's a, That one is a replica, right? Yeah, it's a replica, yes, because it's hard to, or impossible to get parts from Audi. Um, they have the policy that they just sell the complete kit. So I'm trying to get as much to the original one as possible by yeah, using most info from Meet Race Store as well as again and also the correct, correct buttons. Uh, and yeah, that is how I do it. All right, and the Audi is a 30 centimeter yeah. rim, so it's a little smaller, uh, a little quicker to react then. Sure. Um, very nice. Uh, but those are the wheels that are on display here. You do sell other wheels as well, though. Yeah, I'm uh, building not only for simulators, but also for race cars, custom wheels. So that I, I means when you are looking for a sting wheel with a custom button plate, for example, or a complete custom rim, uh, and you have uh, special wishes, the amount of buttons and encoders and stuff, you can just tell me that. and. I make a design and we make a coffee new for just for you. All right, Carsten, thank you very much uh, for this little uh, sound bite of your booth here. And yeah, we'll go over to the next exhibitor. Thank you. Sharing a booth with Fitech was Virtual Racing School or VRS. Let's have a look. I'm here with David of Virtual Racing School at the Sim Racing Expo. Virtual Racing School, despite being having the name school or having school in the name, they are now getting into the hardware business as well, right? Yep. Um, tell us what you are currently developing and what we can soon expect on the market. Um, so we've been working on a direct drive wheel for um, 
about a year now, I guess. All right. And we've had a, a working prototype in, in the works for about six months, which has already been used and tested by many of our coaches. Uh, and, and very, very recently, we've got some uh, pedals yeah. in use at the rigs here at right. the, uh, the Expo. And you're the guy who basically engineered the pedals, right? Primarily, yes. Okay, so uh, tell us a little bit about how they work and what, what, what uh, part of the market, what bracket of the market you're aiming for with these pedals. Um, so essentially with both the wheel and the pedals, we're, we're aiming for the, the high-end premium market in terms of what's already out there. We want to make the best uh, possible pedals and wheel regardless of, of cost. Um, but we do want to obviously have it be affordable, so we want uh, both to be as uh, as competitive as can be, really. Yeah. Um, and so, in terms of in terms of budget, we want to be sort of bringing that into the the mid to high end uh, market. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the pedals and and how they're designed. So, walk us through uh, your ingenuity uh, with the pedals and what are di what is different about your pedals compared sure. to what we're used to in the market. Sure. So. Um, you know, we've obviously done a lot of research. Uh, there's there's many very good pedals already on the market, so we wanted to to try and, and improve on, on things. And uh, most pedals, at least more recently, use like a rubber uh, bumper bushing uh, assembly on yeah. the on the brake pedal. Um, we wanted to try and get away from that because. Uh, it's quite difficult to keep on top of the maintenance for that. Uh -huh. The dirt can get inside the rubbers. There's a large surface area when you compress the brake, uh, so you can get some friction in there. And over time, it's just not smooth anymore yeah. or, or consistent. The, the bushings can perish over time. So we wanted to try and incorporate an actual metal coil spring uh -huh. uh, into the brake. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, most coil springs are linear. Uh, which is not really normal for how a real uh, brake pedal feels. Yeah. So we had to be a bit creative with this sort of rotating triangular cam assembly. And uh, that's fully adjustable. But what that essentially does is it introduces um, a progression, sort of a soft intro progression, yeah. which firms up the, the right. more you press the pedal, which is more like a, a real brake would feel. And that's fully adjustable. So yeah. you, can, you can make that quite soft initially. And you can change okay. the, the, the shape of the force curve. All right, so so you adjust something mechanically about the pedal, mm -hmm. and then you can basically go. Uh, you can change the pedal feel from essentially somewhere close to a road car to somewhere much closer to a race car. Is that right? Yeah. So we we also offer. Um, we we're going to include two, two, at least two different types of physical spring. Okay. Yeah. So roughly twice yeah. the spring rate. So one will be half the other. Yeah. And uh, so in terms of like pedal force, you're looking at 50, 60 kilos for the soft one and, and yeah. sort of 120 uh, yeah. for the, the hard one. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then in addition to that, you've got the, the curve adjustment, which is like a, an extendable uh, rod. You just yeah. undo some, some nuts and swivel it and it adjusts. Yeah. It's like a, um, a tie bar. Adjustment. Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds very interesting, uh, having high adjustability also in terms of the progression. Looking forward to it very much. Thank you very much, David, for Virtual Racing School. Whoops, bit of a hard cut here, but what can you do? Let's move right on to SimTag, another manufacturer of premium paddles. So, I'm here with Janosch of SimTag. You are a manufacturer of high-class sim racing paddles, and you also sell complete high-class sim rigs, right? Yes. Walk us through what you do. So, uh, we are from uh, Zolder, the CSO is Zolder, and our uh, base and shop is there. So, we are selling and building simulators to our special customers. Um, our main product is the pedal set. We developed it because we didn't find about three years ago a good pedal set on the market, which in our, which is our, in our opinion was an enough good for professional use. So we designed one. This is a tilt of 600, uh, original tilt of 600 pedal base plate, uh, pedal uh, base, and we put hydraulic system under it. So we are not using load cells or other uh, non motorsport stuff, just the motorsport uh, products can go into my into our pedal set. That means we are using right now wheelwood master cylinders and wheelwood uh, full cylinders to demonstrate the, and, uh, demonstrate the feeling and the resistance of the pedals. Everything is adjustable, including the stiffness the, of the pedal, the travel of the pedal, 
uh, all the feeling it's uh, changeable and that's very important for the race drivers to have the similar feeling what they have on the race car and if they have it they're feeling at home themselves in the sim and that's right. my job the way they are set up right now um, does that compare to any race car in particular or is it uh, is it just like a general expo setup here this one uh, exactly made this setup by Kevin van der Linde because oh, okay. he is also my ambassador and uh -huh. uh, I also I, every time I ask them well, and send them parts to test and regarding their feedbacks I can offer to my customers the similar feeling what they have that's how it works so I have plenty of drivers like Augusto Farfus, Nestor Girolami, uh, Kevin van der Linde, Tom Coronel, many others from all around the world they are driving different cars, cars uh, and uh, I always ask them about the feelings, how we can make it better. And regarding their feedbacks, I offer these, these options to my new clients and they can choose whatever they want. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. All right, all right. As we had to demonstrate somehow this panel and there was not enough sturdy rigs on the market, so that's why we built a simulator around it. And uh, after uh, we built the simulator, we start to sell the components also from the simulator. And now we have a shop and solder where you can find all the components what we are demonstrating on the simulator uh, and then uh, you can purchase them and collect your best materials or best uh, equipment what you want. Uh, we don't like to uh, judge anything on the market, we would like to lead, let the customer to choose their products. And uh, what we can offer is a test drive what they can do uh, in our shop and they can uh, choose whatever they want. So, it seems we're on a roll with the hard cuts to end the video. Anyway, thank you Janos for this interview. Moving on, SimTag 2 was sharing a booth with a manufacturer of premium wheels, namely Cube Controls. So let's jump right in and see what they brought to the expo. Hey guys, I'm here with Massimo of Hi. Cube Controls, um, an Italian manufacturer of top class steering wheels for sim racing. And Massimo is quickly gonna walk us through the current lineup of Cube Control wheels here. So Massimo, your turn. Okay. We start with the um, GT line first, starting from the uh, GT line steering wheel, which features a um, Swede uh, steering wheel uh, with uh, not backlight uh, uh, buttons and uh, plastic knobs. This is the most basic one we have on the on our line. Then we will uh, move to the GT Pro steering wheel with an uh, OMP uh, steering rim with non stitched but fluid uh, leather and uh, it features uh, backlight buttons and CNC machine knobs. We have then the uh, GT Pro Momo steering wheel. It's the same as the previous one, but the main difference is the uh, steering rim is uh, made from a Momo. It does have a different shape of grips, and uh, other features are still the same as the GT Pro line. So, backlight buttons and CNC machine knobs. We have the uh, Sparco GT Pro rim, which features a Sparco P310 uh, steering wheel, and uh, same feature as well on this one as uh, backlight buttons, uh, aluminum knobs, uh, shifters are all the same from the GT line steering wheel. They are magnetic shifters, switchless. There is no mechanical switch in this one, uh, so they have a longer life and. Uh, a better tactical feeling of the shifter itself. We move to the uh, Formula Line steering wheels. Starting from the uh, Formula Line, we have a uh, full carbon fiber front plate, front plate uh, custom um, rubber grips, same as the uh, real Formula rims. Then we have a uh, shift paddles, steel or sensor and uh, CNC machine and aluminum, and analog clutch paddles with adjustable bite point with this potential. We have uh, uh, non-backlight buttons on this one, as this is the late light version, the most uh, affordable one, and uh, plastic knobs on the front plate. We have then the uh, Formula Pro steering wheel, 
same layout as the uh, light one, but it does have backlight buttons and CNC machined aluminum nuts. Same layout as well from the, on the back side of the wheel, magnetic shifters and analog flash buttons. We have then the, uh, the big one, right? Yeah, the big one. We have the uh, second version of the CSX steering wheel. Okay, and what, is, what has changed in comparison to the first one? The most, the bigger change is the main body of the wheel is now made from aluminum. Uh -huh. It allows us to, to make a more sturdy So that, that assembly. refers to this, this back plate here, Yeah, right? the main the body of cover. the wheel. Okay, the main body. Yeah. Okay, the front is still full carbon fiber? Front is still full carbon fiber. Uh -huh. uh, the only difference is the back side, as you said, is made from billet machined aluminum. And uh, is much stiffer than the uh, carbon because, you know, carbon is pretty hard to work with. Um, aluminum is much easier to work. And we were able to make the assembly of the wheel much more rigid and stiffer, so you don't don't feel any flex in this one. We have the um, same layout as our Formula rims on the back side of the wheel. We have magnetic uh, shift uh, switchless shift paddles and analog uh, clutches, and uh, a uh, 4.3 inches LCD screen with full RPM LEDs and warning LEDs. Same layout as the uh, real formula uh, steering wheel based on the um, McLaren MECPU unit. Uh, we have two rotary encoders, extra encoders on the uh, switches on the front plate of the wheel and uh, four rotary encoders, two on the grips and two on the front plate of the wheel. Thank you Massimo for showing us the Cube Control's wheel lineup. And with that, we're at the end of the first video in this series. If you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe to make sure you won't miss the other two videos in this three-part series. Without giving away too much, let's just say if you like motion rigs, you're in for a treat. So long, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and see you in the next video.